All right, guys, we're going to get right back into it. This is part two of my thanks for you guys helping me reach 500. So we're going to take a look at more of my stash. Okay, guys, the first thing we're going to take a look at is something that some of you guys out there might recognize. Uh, this is from a Japanese anime called The Southern Cross, which was broadcast here as the second chapter of the Robotech saga. And this is one of the soldiers of the Southern Cross. As you can see, it's got some pretty nice box right there, depicting the, the armored trooper. The A Tactics Armored Corps, ATAC, is what they were called in Japan. Here on the sides, no no pictures of the model itself, just more artwork. These are all of the different uh, armored troopers that they had, which were uh, released. I do have a few more of them, which will be coming up as I dig them out for this uh, video. It's actually a pretty cool setup on this one. Let me show you what's in the box. First thing we have is our advertisement for all of the different characters and apparently you can cut some sort of seal out probably for some sort of giveaway or something and here go all of the different models that you can get let's see if we can get this to focus on here so we can give you guys a look at all the different ones that were available Some were for underwater warfare, some were for land. Apparently there were a total of six different models, which are pretty cool. Here is the model that we have. Now this was sold by Ari and their method of uh, instruction booklets always start off with the trees fully painted as a color guide and then it's just a fold out instruction booklet showing, showing you how to put everything together pretty standard stuff you have a choice of two heads here either the armored head or the unarmored head then you have all the weapons putting the body together and here we have a pretty cool shot of everything all together again a color guide or either that or a description of all the options in the box not sure which and here is this character and if you watched the Mac the uh, Robotech you will recognize these characters or they were all seen in the original well in the Robotech version of the character although they had different names and everything was different about them and that's pretty interesting now something that's really cool about this kit is that you see the weapons here are separated from everything else and then some sort of I don't know computer terminal or something accessories that come with it and then what they have here are metal feet and a metal emblem for the kit, which I find very strange. I don't know why they would want you to put metal feet on it, but I guess it's to uh, give it a much more, a much steadier footing when you're displaying them. And here we have face oh we have one that's partially armored and we oh I see you can remove the armor I guess from this face while he's wearing a helmet we have another face here I guess uh, oh so I guess you can display him and there's our cement you can display him with fully armored up or just have the uh, his face exposed with the helmet on 
I suppose if I looked at the instructions a little more carefully, it would have told me that. I just find this one to be interesting because it was one of the, the more popular. Oh, here we go. We have our head with the helmet, which can go on, and then our regular head. And here we have the feet. Where are we with the feet? There we go. And you see, he ain't going anywhere once you put those feet on him. So that's an interesting look back at the original Japanese version of the Southern Cross Trooper. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Okay, now this one, I'm not really sure what anime it's from. It looks sort of like a Gundam, but it's not. The reason I found this one to be really interesting is with all the gold trimming on it, which I thought looked pretty awesome for one of these mechs. As you can see here, you have to shield all the gold trimming on the armor. Actually looks pretty cool. Let's take a look inside. We have to look inside this one to see what's in here. Okay, here we have our instruction sheet. This was made by Takara. I don't know much about this guy. If anybody else out there has any information on him, I'd be interested to know. It might have been from a manga, maybe. As I can see, what well, looks more like manga drawings than anything else. And an interesting breakdown of what this guy's all about. Different parts of his armor. Which, of course, is in Japanese. Here we have our tree layout. looking for oh I guess this is right here where you can see where you're putting all the little gold trimming on his armor and there we have him all together and it's showing all of his accessories and how you oh I guess the claws on his shoulder armor hold the shield interesting interesting character. Now the first thing we're going to look at is these are decal sheets or the sticker sheets where we have a lot of the gold that I guess comprises some of his armor. And then of course we have these green orbs which are probably for the jewels that are on his armor. That's actually pretty neat. And here we have the gold, which is going to be placed on his armor. So it's going to be a combination of the stickers and these gold pieces for his armor. And I suppose that it's also going to involve a little bit of gold painting. As I see a whole lot here that's not here. So I'm going to guess that some of this has to be painted. And there seems to be a lot that's not, that has no gold on it, whereas he seems to have gold everywhere. Oh, this one would be an interesting one to paint. All right, well, that's going to be for future me, because present me is not going to worry about that one. That's going to be a tough one. Again, I don't know what anime this is from. I don't know anything really about it. It just looked kind of cool, so I went for it. I may actually tackle this one, because I'm interested in how exactly all that gold trimming is going to work on here. So this might be one that's worth cracking open, even if it is a vintage kit. Alright, let's move on to the next one. 
Okay, this one is called Neofam. Uh, Round Vernier Vernian, I think is what the name is. This was also, I think, by the uh, creators of Gundam. Uh, and this was another mech suit derived show. This guy had a jetpack that attaches to the back. Now the thing is, I have this same character in a pre-assembled kit. This is from Bandai, where they sold them as a model kit and also as a pre-assembled kit. And I don't know if they were the same molds. I don't think they were. And I think the other one included die cast parts, which this one does not. And this one appears to be a slightly larger scale. What's cool is back in the 80s, they used to include these cards that you would get a little notebook together and you would collect these cards every time you'd build a model. And it would have all the information on the mech that you're building. So you could collect these as well as build the models and make yourself a little library of all the characters and the mechs in the show. That was a cool little thing. I don't think they do that anymore. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, for this one we have to move to a whole different part of the basement as this is so large. This is like the granddaddy of Gundam kits or one of them. And this is ancient compared to what's available now. And they have some really large kits now, but this was one of the biggest back then. And it's insane. Look at the size of this box. It's too big for me to show on, my, on the display area where I was before, so that's why I had to come here. But this guy is humongous. I don't really know how good the articulation is. Probably not that great. See, that's how the technology back then wasn't exactly as good as it is now but this guy is huge so of course we gotta crack this open and of course we love this box art this might be the largest one that I have now here we have the instruction booklet All the steps necessary. Here we have our color guide. For all the painting that needs to be done. And this one also, as usual with Bandai, opens up into a large map-like form. And here we have a picture of the finished mobile suit, weapons and accessories. Here we have all sorts of information on the suit, along with the characters. And here's a cockpit inside it, which I don't know if this one has that in there. Apparently I was going to start this at one point. Or maybe I did start it. Oh no, just some of the parts fell off the trees. Well, maybe I did start this one. Let's take a look and see if there is something here that I started but I never finished. See, the majority of the parts seem to be here. Alright, let's find out together. Here's another part. Apparently, just about everything seems to be here. Although 
though I am seeing a bunch of pieces here that are not here. So this is what I'm going to have to go through. At some point in the future, see if everything is still in the box. I mean, the box alone is worth holding onto this one. And paid $59.90 for this. This has a copyright date of... Let's see, we have a date on here. 1985. Alright, that's going to be it for that one. That's going to be a future project because I'm going to have to find out whether all those parts are in there or not and see what I can do with that one. Alright. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, here we have another giant Gundam kit. This is a Zaku, the Char Aznavold's mobile suit. The cool thing about this one is, as you see here, this is a cutaway model, which is uh, pretty self-explanatory. You get the insides and the outsides. They actually have two of them, one of the RX-78, which I don't have, and Char is here, which I was able to grab. Here is the entire model done. Got a display stand with a, a backing plate. This is very cool. You get the inside in, inner workings of the, the head. You have to have a cockpit with, he's actually inside of it. That would be very cool to do. And it has a little bit of articulation. I guess just the arms. But this will be an amazing kit. To put together. Here we have the instruction book. There's some short, some shots of the finished product. The arms do have a bit of articulation. A few more shots of the finished product. This is very, very cool. You can actually. I guess it has the armor pieces so that you can close it all up and display it as a complete mobile suit. Although I think it'd be way more interesting to display it opened up. So this one might be one that I might have to build. I know everything's in there, so this is a complete kit. Oh, it's a tough one. Do I build the vintage kits or do I just hold on to them? It's a tough choice. All right, let's take a look at something else. Okay, before I put this one back, this is 170 second scale to give all you modeling guys out there just an idea of how big it is. Okay, we'll be back with the next one. Okay guys, now this one is an interesting one. This is a kit that was sold by Ravel. Now this was uh, merchandising tied into the Robotech TV series. And this is actually a Macross uh, model of a Veritech fighter. Or we call them Veritech, they're called Valkyries. This is a transforming model that actually turns from Battleoid form to Valkyrie fighter to Jerwalk form and this kit actually does transform It's a little fiddly, but uh, It's a, a pretty neat kit I don't remember who originally made this it wasn't made by Ravel This was made in Japan. Oh, this was manufactured by Ari. Ari was the maker of Macross kits They I have quite a, I have a few of them myself made by Ari so this is made by the same company that made them from under the Macross name. Just rebranded them as Robotech for here in the States. And we have all the parts here, all in a single bag. This is a stand that bought. Pretty nice. Here it is in fighter form, fully armed. Here you have your 
Robotech. Or, well, this is on the Robotech livery, which is pretty much the same as the Macross livery. Now, this wasn't a simple transformation as you actually have to take it apart and swap pieces back and forth. in order to get it to transform. But it was pretty cool in the fact that this was the same basic Macross kit, just marketed by the, the, the same basic kit as Ari released for the original Macross series, just marketed by Ravel. So if you couldn't get your hands on the Ari versions, you had a chance to jump on it. Ravel released an entire line of these kits uh, featuring all the different uh, types of mechs from uh, from Macross. And uh, we may have uh, one or two more in the collection. But this is a really cool one because it was basically the same kit that uh, they released under the Macross name. All right. We'll move it on. Just have one more note. This is a 1 100 scale. And if you notice, the box has pictures of the finished model on it. Um, the Robotech line from Ravel never had the really cool box art that the RE brands had. As they just took pictures of the model, which is good in effect, in a way that you can see what the model looks like when it's done. So you know what you're getting into. But you do miss that really cool box art. So, uh, it's either one or the other. Okay, we'll be back again. Okay, here we have a pretty cool mobile suit. Uh, the Jagged Doga. I remember uh, getting this because I thought it just looked really cool with that big uh, gun and the shield. And uh, I just kind of love the uh, box art on this. Again, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of box art. And this one just uh, looked really cool to me. So I had to pick it up. Here we can get a good look at the mobile suit there. All painted up. Let's see if we can give you a really good look at that. There it is. Look at that. That is cool. With the shield, the gun. It just makes a really good display. And this is, looks to be an unpainted model. Now, this is from 1988 where the entire craze of detailing, panel lining, all of that didn't really exist too much. As just getting the kit and building them was sometimes all that you really wanted because you could, it, was, it was very difficult to get your hands on these things back then as they weren't as readily available as they are now and this one is very very cool the box art pretty much says it all all right let's move on okay here we have another Gundam model another Bandai kit the REGZ uh, which is from uh, not sure which series this is from this is from 1987 and this again very cool mobile suit I really like the design of this one but I'd say that about all of them at this point but uh, let me see if we can one is very cool. You see all the jetpacks and the thrusters back there. Very, very cool design. Apparently this one has quite a bit of articulation. Look at that. Look at that beam saber. That looks amazing. Let's take a quick peek inside of this one to see what's going on. 
some of these boxes have seen better days, but as long as the kits inside are good and the box art is in good shape, yeah, it doesn't bother me too much. Here we have the instruction manual. Again, really nice picture of the built kit there. And as usual for Bandai, oh, very cool technical drawing. Here we have our weapons and our accessories. The flight pack. Here's the head. And again, one of our folding map instruction sheets. More shots of the finished model. Here go all our trees, everything. Still all packaged up. Like the day it was made. This is a pretty, pretty cool kit. Then, another vintage kit. I mean, calling 1980, these kits vintage. Well, I mean, they are over 30 years old. I gotta say that that is a really cool box art. Now, I got something unusual coming up. Okay, now this, it's kind of, it's uh, 130 second scale, so there is actually a scale there. But it's more of an action figure with a few model kit accessories and this is actually pretty cool because it has working lights the visor and the uh, police lights turn on it's got a little bit of assembly that it needs and has decals to be added batteries that get loaded in for the lights it's got accessories such as the guns here let me, uh, let's take a look at it. All right, here we have another one from SPT Laser. This is from 1986. Very cool one. You can see him here with his flight pack on. I mean, this thing looks really neat. Again, you can see the clear canopy. Where are the pilot resides just like the last one we looked at you'll see that you can build the cockpit have a pilot on the inside that's actually very very neat you can see him right through the canopy this is in 170 second scale so you guys can get an idea of what size it is you guys who build aircraft a lot there it is again very cool looking with his guns, the wings fold in on this one. That's very, very cool. Here's his specs there, right on the box. Very neat, this one. Okay, this one I will admit, I bought just because it was a Gundam. Not necessarily because I really like the design of the box, because I think it's just kind of funny looking. It looks kind of like a bird. The red Regal Goo is what it's called. This is from made by Bandai. It's from 1986. And uh, oh, I bought this at Outer Limits. I remember that place years ago. But it's kind of a chunky bird like. 
mech, it's not really an attractive one, and, uh, just, like I said, really just kind of funny looking. Here on the side of the box, you see the other mechs in the series. I mean, this has to be one of my least favorite of all the Gundams I have. Just because it's just, you know, just looks kind of like a bird. Not even like a cool bird, just kind of like a bird bird, if you know what I'm talking about. Alright, so we're going to go right past this one. Okay, now, much like the Robotech one that we saw earlier, this is Ari's version of the Valkyrie fighter, but under the original Macross uh, name. With the Macross, uh, oh, Forbidden Planet. I got this for a Forbidden Planet for ten ninety five. Back in what must have been uh, had to be late eighties. This one, early nineties maybe. It's one one hundred scale. Here we have Jerwalk, Batroid, and Fighter Mode. It's they are very good kits, but if you look at it and you compare it to the one that was sold by test by Ravel it is the exact same kit now this one has the super Valkyrie parts which the Ravel one didn't have but let's take a quick look at it. again very cool you have your data cards Here, I'm assuming this is some sort of model building tips or club or something. I don't know what that is. It's in Japanese. Data cards are very cool. Also in Japanese, but that's a very cool shot of the cockpit. And here we have the instruction sheet. Again, it's pretty much the same thing. You have to disassemble it to transform it and swap parts. So I'm going to bet that the build procedure is basically the same between the two of them. And here we have a pretty neat decal placement guide. That's actually making that would make a nice little poster all on its own. And if we look at the parts, these are the Super Valkyrie parts, which would be the extra things that wouldn't be in the Ravel kit. And this is everything that's in the Ravel kit. Except for the decals. The decal is going to be different. But I'm going to bet that all of these parts are interchangeable between this and the Ravel kit. Now the interesting thing about this kit is that the metal landing gear and the parts that allow you to perform the transformation or are made out of metal. That's actually pretty neat. So here we have an example of a kit that was sold on by two different companies under two different names, but it's the same kit. Now that all has to do with the entire legal issue with bringing Macross items to the United States uh, when uh, the Robotech people had the rights or something like that. It was a very confusing issue which just recently got settled. So we're going to be seeing more Macross stuff here in the States and that's going to be pretty cool. Okay, and that's it with that one. Okay, here we have another one of the Southern Cross uh, armored troopers. This is the Griori Miritali Police, which I'm gonna pretty much guess it's a misspelling of uh, military police. This again is another one of the Robotech uh, acquisitions. 
as it was originally Southern Cross, but brought here under the Robotech, the next generation, I think it was. Uh, the middle chapter in the Robotech saga. Nobody's favorite, but it's there, and I don't know, I kind of enjoyed it. It just wasn't as good as the other two. But it's pretty much the same kit as the other one, except for it's a different branch of the military service, and this one actually looks like we started it years ago. Oh, this may be another this may be another rescue. And it looks like all the parts are here. And this one's been started, so this one's gonna have to be built. If all the parts are here, which I don't know if they are. This may have been my brother again starting a kit and not finishing it. And it looks like certain things may be missing. So we're gonna have to see if we can save this one or not. That'll be a future project. Okay, and here we have another kit from Ari, and this is under the original Macross name. And this one is dated from, I'm gonna say, probably 1986 or 87. As Ari released all of the original Macross kits in that vintage. And here is a full line of all of the kits that they had available. All under the Macross name, not the Robotech name. As the SDF-1 was released under the Robotech name here in the States. Um, let's take a look on the inside and see what we have going on here. Oh wait, this still, apparently I've never opened this. It still has a tape on it. All right, well, you know what? We're just going to leave it that way. It's a vintage kit, it's never been opened, and I guess it's going to stay that way. It's kind of cool just to have one like that that's never been opened. But as you can tell, it's another great box art here, and uh, that's probably what most attracted me to it when I picked it up. I really do love the box art. All right. That's going to be it for that one. Okay, next up on the docket is Mobile Suit F71. This is pretty much a gun cannon. And I love these infantry style mobile suits as they are my favorite part of the whole mecha thing where they just look like they're walking tanks. And uh, I love that. They look like machines, very mechanical. Not like today's stuff where everything looks like it's a, or, you know, a character as opposed to just being a big brutal machine like they were meant to be which is why my favorite mechas are all the ones from the 80s because they didn't they, they we went away from the super robot era we went into the real robot era and now we're back into the super robot era and uh for me the real robot era is going to be where i'm always going to be because it's my favorite versions of these things because it's what they were meant to be. And this box art here pretty much says everything that it needs to. I love this box art. You see it here, you see the other one in the background. Okay, you know that they're basically walking tanks. And they, it, it looks fantastic. This is one of my favorites. And here we have take a look at this and zoom this in here because this is a pretty pretty cool kit look at that look at that thing with those cannons this is a kit that's crying out to be built and weathered I mean look at that what year is this this isn't from 1990 I don't know how rare this thing is uh, apparently it's another one that I may have opened it to take a peek maybe yeah. uh, maybe I never did oh I did open this one look at that let's just pull back on that let's just take a look at this art again that is fantastic. 
that is really what gets me with some of these kits. And let's take a good look at this guy. Wow, look at that. Now, for me personally, if I were to build it, that green would have to get a lot darker, more like an olive drab, a very dark green. There would have to be a lot, of, quite a bit of dirt and rust on it. Or you could do it for Desert Warfare and give it a nice uh, desert sand or brown finish. Or even some camouflage, that would look great. I mean, I know it's not exactly canon, excuse the pun, but I'm sure that these things were used in all sorts of different environments, which would require them to have different appearances. And that just looks fantastic. Alright, I know this is another vintage one, but I may have to build this. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, here we have the Dragon R Metal Armor XD-03. This is the third of the three major characters in Dragon R. We've already seen the other two in the last video. This is the one with the radar dish. Four ahead. As you can see, it's got wings, they fold up. It's got rocket launchers. It's basically their early warning mecha. And it's actually a pretty cool idea. And again, look at that box art. That is just so cool. This is 1144 scale, also from Bandai. All right, now let's see what's next. Oh, this one's pretty cool. This Gal Galbaldi B. I like the design of this one, which is why I bought it. It's kind of like a Zaku. But the, the coloring and the shield and the, the head with the with those steel cables going around it, I really kind of like that. There's something about that it looked like a, just another version of a Zaku suit, which I thought was very cool. So that's pretty neat. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. Okay guys, that's going to do it for part two of a look at the stash. Uh, there's plenty more to come, um, but that's going to be for tomorrow because it's already three o'clock in the morning here and I'm having a lot of fun doing this, but I got to get some kind of sleep. So uh, tomorrow we'll have another video up. We're going to keep going with the stash and don't worry car guys because there's a lot of cars coming. Um, we just got to get through this part first and uh then there's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff coming so it's gonna get interesting it, well it's already interesting to me anyway because uh, i love all this old anime stuff and just a chance to revisit it doing this video is fun in itself so that's it for now i'm gonna see you guys in the next video remember like subscribe give a thumbs up and give me some comments. Let me know what you guys think of some of these kits that we're seeing here. Are you guys mecha fans? Are you not? Uh, is there something that uh, you guys have that I have glossed over here? Um, I'd like to know uh, there's some kits out there that I missed. So let me know. Put it in the comments and uh, let's talk. All right. And I will see you guys on the next one.